Um, we have we have some guests coming this afternoon, Executive Director Nevin, I know, and I want to make sure that we um, if we have to do anything to get them on oh, just 245. We've got Pam Anderson and uh, committee member Monty Jewell from the Committee on Professional Ethics and Proposed Amendment to RPC 1.8E. And then we have um, our chief financial officer and our treasurer at 315 to talk about budget and audit committee items about the travel policies that are listed there in your agenda. So um, we have roughly, looks like a half hour, and I know it's gonna take more than a half hour to talk about our uh, next agenda item, but I think we'll have to stop at that one point, at least for, um, for our guests from the professional ethics committee um, at 2.45 so they can get on and get off. And then we can go back to it. So we are up to the um, the proposed revisions to member engagement committee charter. Um, oh, I'm sorry, no. We're up to the um, the structures committee discussion, which was supposed to start, I believe, at one o'clock. No. So I don't see the, there are some materials, late, late materials that outline some of the um, financial considerations. And so I'm going to turn this over to uh, Executive Director Nevitt to uh, talk about this, um, these financial calculations that I, I believe that she and other people on her staff worked on to present to you, the board, about different ways of moving forward and what the financial cost might be. Executive Director Nevin. Thank you. So as President Tollefson said, these materials are in your late, late materials and I apologize, uh, they are so <laughs> late. Um, that's in part because the executive committee had a special meeting earlier in the month to consider this issue. So we were waiting to, to see what came out of there. Um, and what did come out of there were, there was a little bit of brainstorming. And so uh, there were three ideas that were thrown out as to how we might move forward um, with regard to the action that the board took at the special meeting on December 14th. Um, and I have included that, it's in your late materials at page five. Uh, there was a question at the executive committee about the origin of this. So just to clarify, um, at the December 14th meeting, there was a proposal uh, which the board adopted with several changes. And so this policy is that proposal with the changes incorporated. Um, so that's what you find at page five. Um, but as President Tollefson noted at the end of the December 14th meeting, it didn't, you know, this proposal that the board adopted didn't provide all the detail that we need in order to figure out how to move forward. Um, so there were three ideas thrown out at the executive committee and also a request to know what the financial cost of those would be. And those three ideas were one, scenario A, which you can find details in your materials starting at page seven. And scenario A essentially calls for um, eight monthly meetings, um, full day hybrid meetings uh, at the WISBA office. Uh, the second scenario that the executive committee discussed was, sorry, I'm trying to get back to, was uh, to do scenario A, but to have them as um, virtual meetings. Uh, one thing uh, to note is that the action that the board took on December 14th uh, seemed to contemplate two hybrid all day meetings for public comment. And so that's why under scenario B, it's, it's indicated to be six virtual meetings and two hybrid meetings. And then scenario C was the proposal that rather than having separate meetings, uh, these discussions be added on to our existing board meetings. And between now and the deadline set forth in the December 14th adopted proposal, there are three meetings, March, May, and July. And again, because the Denver, December 14th proposal seemed to contemplate two separate all day hybrid meetings, Scenario C would be to have uh, those three half-day discussions added to the existing board meetings, 
and then have two full day hybrid meetings at the WISPA office. So um, we set forth the estimated fiscal impact of each of those scenarios. Um, and the assumptions are there as well. Uh, there's a lot of different ways that this could go. So it's important to look at the assumptions. So for example, for the all day in-person meetings, the assumption is that we will not be reimbursing for hotels. Um, given some of the discussion earlier, if it is important to the board that you know hotels be a part of that, then we need to, that would change the calculation. Um, I also, so, oh, so you have the total cost there. In addition to that at the bottom, I just summarized what the estimated cost is for each hybrid meeting, for each virtual meeting, and also for each half day addition to the board meeting. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions about that. One other thing I wanna note, uh, you will not find uh, any estimated costs for staff time. As many have pointed out, there's no doubt that this will take a great investment of staff time, regardless of which scenario we go. Um, it's not included here as a fiscal impact because it's a sunk cost. We're already, <laughs> you're already paying us. Uh, so it's time that we'll, it's really just time that we will spend on this other than time on other things. Um, at one point earlier uh, in this discussion, I had suggested that the board might consider um, contracting with someone to help facilitate this process. Uh, I certainly think this is a big enough project to warrant that, but I don't have a specific proposal for you. So if that's something the board wants to explore, we could talk about that. But for now, I've primarily just estimated the direct costs of having these additional meetings. So far, I see two hands up. Uh, I believe Brent, uh, Governor Williams Ruth had his up first. Thank you, Mr. President. I move to accept the ethos proposal with it being put under scenario A of the eight all day meetings with the anticipated fiscal impact of 22487. Second. Okay, there's been a motion and a second to adopt uh, the ethos proposal, and I'm gonna gonna let Governor, excuse me, Executive Director Nevitt um, restate it so that we all understand what it is moving forward during the discussion. I believe the motion was to adopt the ethos scenario or the ethos proposal, which is scenario A, uh, under scenario A, which calls for eight all day meetings to be held as hybrid at the WISPA office. And I'll um, speak to that if, if you would permit well, Mr. President. You, you have a second, so yes, please. So the, again, going back to the original discussion and, and again, failure on my part to help clarify back in December, that the idea would be that these conversations and meetings be in their own standalone process. I mean, I can't even imagine, we're only halfway through our first day of this meeting, we've got tomorrow going on, and then we're going to come back at the end of this meeting and throw in and, and, and start fresh with as if we had fresh eyes, fresh mindset, fresh psyche to address the issues that are always so heated and charged because it's such a core to who we are as an organization. And that is why I absolutely believe that um, having separate standalone meetings um, will be essential. Um, you know, in terms of the actual agenda itself, those can be modified and whether, and, and again, I believe that it should be hybrid if we're allowed, but again, we, who knows what's going to be happening with COVID if we're going to be seeing more government mandates that say no more meetings of more than 10 people outside of the same family again. And so if that happens, then obviously the hybrid would have to be entirely virtual. Um, but I think that we should move forward with the intent that they be offered as hybrid for those who are willing and able to get together and utilize the amazing conference space and, and rooms at the WISBA offices with also the built-in technology for those who uh, are needing to be able to participate um, in, in a remote fashion as well. But that the end of the day is that we have dates that are scheduled. And, and if you can't make it, then 
okay. I mean, it's, it is a lot of time, I understand, but these are the things that we're here to do. And I am firmly in the camp that we need to get moving. We need to start the conversation, continuing to have rancorous discussion and debate over the fact that we're not even having a discussion or debate yet is not helpful. We need to just roll up our sleeves and dig in and do the dive so we can respond to the court and uh, fulfill the charge that we've been asked to do. Thank you so very much. I will not speak again. Governor, I see Governor, we've got lots of hands up. Just don't, don't, don't put your hands down. Keep your hands up. Got Governor Clark followed by Governor Abel, Governor Angevel. And then um, I don't know if Executive Director Neva, did you want to speak again? I can wait. I just want to clarify oh. something before the vote. Well, do you need to clarify it now before other people okay. speak? I'll just clarify. I just want to clarify whether the dates uh, are also set in stone or if those are open for discussion. I think uh, particularly if we need to have um, certain key essential staff there, like Rex Nolte, for example, uh, we need to make sure that there aren't co conflicts with other WISPA events. Thank you very much. Okay. Um... Well, and I, I'll just say that to, as the moving party, I did intend to keep the dates proposed. And, and again, if there's a reason why they can't happen then, then as close to them as possible. But I, I like the idea that this proposal actually had dates that we could all look at our calendars and put them on now. And if you can't make it, you can't. And hopefully Rex is going to be available for everything because he is the most indispensable of all of us, right? Okay, thank you very much. Uh... Governor Clark. Sure, thank you, Brian. Um, when I look at the estimated cost for proposal one, um, I had some questions um, about it because the, the numbers don't seem to, at least in my mind, make a lot of sense. The uh, catering assumes that a catered lunch at the bar okay, would be $600 for eight meetings. That seems uh, erroneous. I, I think it's gonna cost well, way more than that for eight, eight of them. And then one thing I'd like to speak on uh, about the travel cost, I think it makes sense um, that governors that aren't in, I mean, from Seattle or, or near there, if they want to travel there, it's an all day meeting. And I think paying, paying for some hotel, I mean, I, I mean, it's fair. So, you know, that, I mean, you know, perhaps you want to do that for some as far as a, uh, you know, an uh, amount you go, but it doesn't seem like this motion as presented is really fair for, for the governors from the fifth, third, and, 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 and mine. Um, I, 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 obviously, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I think we have Governor Abel next, followed by Governor Angel, followed by Crass President Shiketti, followed by Nancy Hawkins. Thank you, Mr. President. Just a couple of items. Um, as an initial matter, I absolutely agree with Governor Williams Ruth that we want to get started on this process sooner rather than later. And I appreciate the efforts of um, those who went into drafting uh, this proposal. As I look at it, it looks to me like essentially. Um, redoing what the bar structure work group did uh, under the Supreme Court's auspices a few years ago. And as a participant in that work group, I know, at least for me, speaking for nobody else, what I found to be by far the most helpful was, one, the comparison of the other models that are out there, two, the comments and feedback from stakeholders, members, and, and, and public, and some of the three, some of the um, experts who came in to, to talk to us and give us briefings. Uh, a lot of the other stuff on there, at least for me, just speaking personally, was, was less helpful to me. And so in looking at what has been proposed, I think we can do this in less than eight meetings. And I think we can do this cheaper than under scenario A. Um, so if this motion that's been made fails, I will have a revised motion. But I think mine is sufficiently different that I, I don't think it makes sense to amend the existing motion. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Um, Governor An Angel Bell. I Thank you, Mr. Think President. Was next, and then past President Shaketti. Well, I uh, actually am going to yield my time to past President Shaketti. 
House President, former Governor Shaketi. So thank you. I wanted to talk a little bit about the proposal because it is my proposal. Um, I put it together after our December uh, meeting, special meeting, um, because I was criticized that my first proposal was not filled with detail. And so I went back and put as much detail as I could, shared this with the executive committee a week or two ago, uh, and made sure that we were covering what I thought was important topics, and things that I learned in the structures work group, uh, the things, as, as, as Governor Abel mentions, that I found important. Uh, only three of us were involved in that process, although I understand President Pellison also attended the meetings. Um, but we're all going to be involved in this process now, so there would have to be some duplication of what happened before uh, and, and, and maybe some presentations that would be repeated so that we bring everybody up to speed on you know, what we heard then and or whether positions have changed given the litigation that we've seen over the course of the last couple of years. It's no longer a discussion about whether the union issues apply to bar associations, the litigation has turned it into more of a discussion about directly related to bar associations. So I put, I went through, I, I started out, we, I, I'm in Hunter, Governor Abel, you can correct me if my memory is wrong, but I thought we had seven or eight perhaps meetings with the structures work group, um, something around that, that number. Uh, and I think part of those, our discussions were cut off by um, Chief Justice Fairhurst's uh, illness. So we would have done a, a couple more, I believe, if um, she wasn't feeling well, when she wasn't feeling well toward the end. Um, and some have felt that we kind of rushed it toward the end as well to get to a, a report and a decision. Um, I, I don't feel we, we want to do that in this scenario. And, uh, I, and I do believe in-person meetings, you know, this, this format is great in, in an emergency and evidently this meeting was an emergency to held, hold by Zoom, but it's not ideal. And it's certainly not well for uh, con conducive to good discussions and analysis and seeing things up on the board and, and, and being together and talking about this. So I think, I think the cost, $22,000, is well worth eight meetings to get together. If that means that I need to travel up from District 3 and travel back to District 3 in one day, so be it. Um, I think it's important to keep in mind that this is a issue that was requested of us by the Supreme Court. And I know there's rumors out there that the WSBA reached out to the Supreme Court and whispered in their ear and said, you know, you need to tell us to do this because we want you to do this. And I'm, I'm going to state for the record right now, that is simply not the case. That is not what's happening here. The reason why Chief Justice Gonzalez came to our last meeting was to answer those questions and to tell everyone how this originated. We all know how this originated. We were at the Supreme Court board meeting back in um, September and we talked to them about this issue. And then they voted in en banc to have us do a process. Mr. No one... President, point of order, this is not germane to the motion and we're short of time anyway. May we ask that Mr. Shaketi be directed to keep his comments to the motion on which he does not even vote. I, I think he's doing a good job. He just wants to give a little history. Go ahead, uh, past President Shaketi. Thank you, President Tolleson. So, so uh, again, this is a request from the Supreme Court, and I don't want to be you know, short with this. I don't think we should be cutting corners. I think we need to take this seriously. Eight meetings uh, sounds like a lot. Um, but if you look at the topics that I've included, I think many of you will agree that those topics should be discussed 
and we sh and inevitably because we talk all talk a lot uh we're going to probably talk more on some than others and uh, we need the time to be able to do that and so you know i I, I appreciate Governor Williams Ruth and 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 and, and wanting to abide by the dates. I think he's he's um, spot on that uh, if these dates aren't working, then let's try to find dates that are uh, near to those dates so that we don't get um, off the rails and and or derailed and uh, we find that we're running out of time. Um, the topics will inevitably have to change in some fashion some sometimes when we have presenters that can't present at nine o'clock on a you know Saturday morning. Um, they may be available at other times, so we'll have to do some adjustments, but we can do that as we go and uh, Governor Abel's idea that maybe we there's a different proposal to eliminate some of the meetings. Well, we can possibly do that too as we go. If we're finding that we're going faster than we ordinarily would, or we do, we thought we would, then you know we can adjust that. But we got to get into it, and we got to start looking at it. Uh, and and if we decide that maybe some of the topics we've already been educated enough about, we can do that. This gives the structure of a good structure, I think, to take us from A to B and into a decision by August, which we've already adopted as the process. Um, so I would encourage us to vote yes on the motion and just proceed. And then if we come to a situation as a group that says, you know, maybe we should look at this or maybe not that, then let's do that too. Um, but we need to start the process. And this was my attempt to do that. Thank you, President Tolson. Thank you. We have um, I see Executive Director. Do you have another clarification, or, or what did you have? That oh, I'm still hung up on the date issue, and I'm going to defer to Rex Nolte, who I think may have some help, some information on that. Okay, um, Rex Nolte, Broadcast Services Manager. Thank you, President Tolson. Um, so, so yeah, so I, I've just received those dates. Um, would like to clarify that all these dates are Saturdays. Um, so, so just from our seat, that's all overtime. Um, so, you know, we're, we're going to look at this request and, and do our best to accommodate, you know, we are a, a full-time CLE broadcast team for the most part. So all of these asks are, is additional work, but I think with some, from some flexibility on both sides, a lot can be accomplished here. Um, I do think is important that, uh, excuse me, sorry, um, that, we keep our normal WISBA communication channels in place so that we can you know, try and do as much as we can in-house is ideal. Um, I was involved in the previous work group. I did work closely with that work group to identify all the possible dates and to do the, our best to reduce overtime for WISBA staff. So it was more of a partnership on identifying dates. Um, I do understand the priority to move quickly here. So I would say at first glance, it tends to be more problematic as we get later into this schedule for weekend dates, mid-year season kicks off, more CLEs start to come and play. As we all know, as we get closer to summertime, we're gonna start having more in-person CLEs come back as a part of our portfolio as well. So I would almost propose, is it possible we could work some Fridays in here to reduce a little of those weekend working time for staff? We do have already five working, working weekends on the calendar throughout the summer for other WISBA events. Um, so I would just propose that for now. I will respond in writing to Tara with some specific information about each date and just conflicts with future weekends that are close to that where we're already working both Saturday and Sunday for some of those, uh, those uh, events. So that's all I have for now. I think we can do a lot of it and we can kick off here quickly. Um, but again, these are Saturday requests to, to just so everyone is aware. Thank you very much. Um, I see Nancy Hawkins has got her hand up. I know she submitted a, a very long detailed memo to um, the executive director this morning who distributed it to all the governors. I don't know if I, I guess you're gonna have to make it part of the record, part of the late, late, late materials. Uh, so Nancy Hawkins, please. Well, I'm sure you'll be pleased to hear that I'm not going to read 
my entire memo, our entire memo from the family law section. I wanna focus for right now on the last page. And in, uh, I heard Kyle describe that topics could be changed and days could be changed and that sort of thing. And, and I'm here to say this, the, this entire format needs to change. The 2019 structure work group that was chaired by the late Justice Fairhurst was composed of three BOG members. It had other representatives on it. We, as an organization, it is not appropriate that such major structure changes are decided by a, apologize, it's a call from the Bar Association. I must not have paid my dues yet. Um, that we need to be, sections need to be at the table. Other people need to be at the table. Uh, I went through Kyle's proposal and it is true that periodically there is an hour here or there for comments from individuals. There's uh, uh, 75 minutes set aside for sections in particular on one, on one day. And that's just not enough. And it's not a fair process. Um, this proposal was not circulated amongst boards and sections with sufficient time for any discussion. Um, it, as I recall, it, the, the initial motion was circulated only to, um, it might have even just been to the executive committee, but it certainly was just to the board. It wasn't circulated to the outside world here of sections boards and other interested people. So, so we've got this structure that has now been imposed upon sections and boards and others without representation. The, one of the reasons the Fairhurst work group worked was that people were at the table. They didn't just throw the tribal courts into, you know, come down here with a bunch of other people and maybe you'll get your three minutes within an hour. No, there was a representative from the Colville tribe on the work group. We had people with the legal assistance program director in the work group at the table. We had section representatives at the table. That's what you need to have here. If you do not, you, if this Board of Governors, many of whom will then not be on the Board of Governors when this structure changes, that seems to be the goal of some people, some of you won't be there, but we'll still be there. We'll still be a section, hopefully. But by having this proposed group be only the Board of Governors, you, you will not get the range of information and opinion and, and input that you need to have. And it will be a forever flawed recommendation, no matter what it is. So we ask to be at the table, part of the discussion, part of the input, not just input that somebody can sit and nod their head at, but at the table where people talk back and forth, instead of patiently waiting as I do and others do for all the governors or as, I, as they're referred to earlier in the memo, the adults, when they finish talking, then we get a couple of minutes here or there. This is a flawed process that is being put in place and we urge you to drop it and start over with what that process should be. Of course, it should be at least eight sessions. But who's at the table listening to the, that input matters. And at least from our perspective, it needs to include sections. Thank you, uh, Nancy Hawkins. 
I have, I believe I've got Governor Clark, Governor Peterson, past President Chiquetti again. Sure, Brent, thank you so much. Um, I was really honored to be one of the three from the BOG that was on that group and to work with Mary. And that is uh, one of the highlights of my legal career and indeed is something I will never forget. I was honored to, to do. To respond, I mean, with that, we had three governors, we had three uh, delegates from, uh, um, one from a small section, one from, an, I mean, um, I mean, it's medium sized section and one from a, a large one. We also had three um, regular members and, that, and then we had two uh, other, uh, okay, that, that weren't. Those were dictated specifically by Mary Fevers in an in, in, uh, order to us. It's my understanding from Chief Gonzalez that he expects the Bob to be the ones who, uh, who decided this, or at least that, that was my assumption. And I guess that I would, what I would comment to, to Nancy is we are the elected delegates for the, the members. Whoever, wherever you live, that is your district's governor. There are elections. This is a democratically elected board. So your voice is through them, I think. I mean, personally, that, that's been, you know, my goal here, at least. But I mean, I'm certainly open myself if, if we want to look at that as far as who's, I mean, who votes, you know, you know, kind of thing. So thank you. Um, so we have some guests. Uh, are they I, on another matter? I, I'm wondering if we can kind of like... Um, just take a quick moment to get our guests on. Uh, so we are like I said, kind of way behind. I'm sorry about that, but it just happens. Uh, and then move back to this discussion because I think they might have some time limits. 